Wow, have I got an exciting story for you. Not long ago, I met a man named Richard Clark, who's an electrician slash worship leader. Sometime before then, Richard had walked into a doctor's office feeling terrible, and he found out that he had blood sugar levels of over 400. That's right, over 400. Well, he got scared, and he got motivated, and he made some major changes in his life and in his diet. And those changes surely worked. His blood sugar levels went from over 400 to the low 100s. In the interview that you're going to be seeing, Richard shares some of the principles he discovered and employed that helped him bring his blood sugar from incredibly high back to nearly normal. Richard, thank you so much for agreeing to be interviewed. You're welcome. I'm glad to be here. Well, we are so appreciative of you and your willingness to allow us to use you as kind of a guinea pig and uh, <laughs> to, to show some things to you and to others. But give us a little background. Let's start with your mom. Uh, you're like me. We both had moms with diabetes. Tell us a little bit about her situation, especially in her latter days. Yeah, my mother lived with me for the last few years she was alive, and um, she had type 2 diabetes. Okay. But she smoked cigarettes, and she didn't eat properly, and she didn't learn a lot of, about nutrition, which would have helped her a lot. Right. So she ended up being a double amputee. Okay. Where was she? Where was, where did they cut off her leg? Was it low, high? Or? Well, it started with just a little boo-boo on her toe. She lost her toe on one foot. Okay. Then, uh, you know, it went to gangrene. She lost her foot. Mm -hmm. Then the other foot, and then both legs all the way up to wow. her thighs. Must have been traumatic for her. It was and very. And for you, since she, yes. she was living with you. It, well, that was the whole reason she moved in with me, that, so she'd have someone there all the time. Okay. And then um, then she uh, her kidneys failed, and she got on dialysis. Mm. And then she had other problems, her gallbladder. She had wow. a, a quadruple bypass. She had a few heart attacks. Yeah. And um, then eventually, um, you know, the she had a heart attack and took her life. Yeah, so, so that was a, a rough patch in her life, that, that, those last years. How, mm. how long would that be, the last three, four, five years, or how long did I that think, last? I think that was about five, right around five years. Around five years. Yeah, she was 73. So it did a real number. Diabetes did a real number on her. It did. And because you were living with her, she was living with you, mm -hmm. uh, you were learning a few things about diabetes and about, uh, you know, some of the problems it can cause. Right. At that time, I wasn't diabetic, or, and um, but I got to talk to her dietitian and nutritionist that came by every other day. And I learned so much about what she was supposed to do. But, you know, us Clarks were kind of hard-headed. And <laughs> she would tell me, it's my life. I want to eat quesadillas. That's what I'm going to eat. And, you know, she, yeah. but she is a heavy smoker and, and she didn't get any exercise in a wheelchair. Okay. So once she, she became a double amputee, from that point on, it, it went pretty fast right. because of her lack of movement. So that was kind of an education for you, although at the time you didn't have diabetes, you probably assumed you never would. And so years passed, and suddenly you found yourself facing a similar situation, at least with the diagnosis of diabetes. Now, I was fascinated when you were talking to me earlier about just how you found out. Tell us a little bit about how you first began to feel like you might have a problem. You went to the doctor and what he discovered. Well, um... When I was younger, I was diagnosed with hypoglycemia. Okay. I never ate right. I was always a junk food junkie, yeah. and I was always really hyper. And um, in my, when right before I got diagnosed with diabetes, I had noticed that I started getting tireder. I had less energy. I, I didn't sleep good at night. I felt like that, um, you know, most mostly it, it came on pretty quick too. In in a matter of just a couple of weeks, I started noticing that. I didn't have the energy. I was okay. in the evenings. I was tired, but then that last night before I went to the doctor, um, I, I felt that day. I just felt like I had no energy, and I just wanted to go home and go to bed. Hmm. And then I was up all night urinating. How many times would you say you urinated? A dozen. Night? Yeah, and which it is very typical of uh, severe diabetes. Yeah, and yeah. It, and it wasn't little. Oh no! I went to the bathroom a lot. Yeah, you know, and I hadn't drank that you much. You were discharging thinking, a lot of water and yes. wondering where that was coming from. Right. And then when I woke up the next morning, I felt like I hadn't slept at all. Okay. I was I was very thirsty. I was I was hungry, uh -huh. and I had no energy. And you know, I knew in the back of my mind, I knew what was going on because of my experience with my mother. Okay. So I made that doctor's appointment and went there, and my sugar was over four hundred when I got to the, the doctor. The doctor tested you. Yes. 
and uh, it was over 400. That yeah. is really high. That's not just a little high. No. In fact, you may well have been higher than your mother ever was. Yeah. Uh, you probably may remember, but at any rate, it was extremely high. What did the doctor say when he noticed how high you were? Well, they, him and his assistant come walking in. The first thing they said to me, how are you feeling? <laughs> okay. I said, well, I feel a little lightheaded and maybe dizzy and loopy. And, you know, I, my, my brain's kind of foggy. He goes, you're, you shouldn't be walking. He said, your sugar's over 400. He goes, you really should be in, you know, you shouldn't be moving around like this. Yeah. And um, so... He, they ran some tests and confirmed that I was diabetic. Okay. And I changed my diet so immediately. You heard the D word, which <laughs> yes. is something no, none of us want to hear. Right. That's a, that's a cuss word now. <laughs> but, but you had uh, had enough experience with your mom. You knew a few <clears throat> things to do. Yes. Tell us what steps you took. You, you said immediately you changed your diet. Tell us what steps you took along those lines. I went home and I threw out the Bluebell ice cream, the Dr. Peppers. <laughs> Good choice. Yeah. yeah. And, and uh, I immediately just went... A vegan. I, I just, from that very day, I didn't eat anything but vegetables. I had, I think for three days, I, I ate garden salads with all the vegetables I could think of and grilled chicken breast. Okay. Well, it wasn't quite vegan if you were eating some chicken, yeah, but it was, it was I couldn't close. go all the way. A lot, a lot of vegetables, though. Yes, sir. And drinking water. I, okay. I think I, I fasted everything except for that. And that's what I did for about a week. And in a period of, I think it was almost two months, I lost 50 pounds. Wow. Yeah, and then wow. I, I got to talk to a nutritionist again, and, and I started, you know, thinking about all the things I've learned from my mother's nutritionist yeah. and started cutting things out of my diet. And I actually, within within a month, I was feeling a lot better than I had in a long time. Yeah, I lost some weight. Um, I wasn't fidgety. Um, I, I had, my son even told me, Dad, you, you seem a lot calmer now, you know, than you used to. Yeah. And um, I noticed that, what I ate would make a big difference. Well, yeah, and that's what we are preaching through these videos and, yes. and pretty much everything that I do related to diabetes. What you eat makes a huge difference. It really does. I can see that. So uh, you next went to the doctor. I suspect your blood sugar had gone down a bit mm -hmm. from yes. this dietary change. What, what was the next time, what was the reading the next time you went to the doctor? Um, I, well, I didn't mention, but I immediately bought myself a glucose meter and I monitored my... Smart move. Yes. Every morning and every night. Yeah. And I tried to get it as close to 100 as I could. And I, I maintained it pretty well. And there was a period when I ran out of test strips and was busy and, yeah. and didn't test it for a while. Okay. But it had been... Um, I, didn't, I didn't go back. I think I went back to them a few months later. Yeah. And my levels were in a normal range or around 100 that's when he told me that wow. it, it had to be below 130 or i'd be damaging my organs yeah so so he must have been happy with what he was saying yes absolutely because you know there's a lot of diabetics that are really high and they just go back to the doctor month after month year after year and it never really does anything yours made a dramatic shift yes but you had made a dramatic dietary shift as well and it sounds to me like the things you had learned and seen with your mother exactly. uh, proved extremely beneficial to you. Yes. Yeah, he made that comment that he said that he, he doesn't see this very often where someone makes a dramatic change like that. Yeah. And I explained to him that I had taken care of my mother and I knew the results. Exactly. And I saw what, what this can do to someone and it, it can happen fast. And it not only uh, gave you some information about what to do, but you had motivation. Yes. Because you saw how much your mother had been hurt and damaged by this Suffered, horrible yes. disease. Yes, she suffered greatly in her last five years. Yeah. Yes. And when you were having the, the high blood sugar, before you quite knew you were diabetic, were you having any other symptoms? You mentioned feeling uncomfortable. You mentioned uh, the frequent urination, uh, feeling lightheaded. Anything else? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, I think it's more than a month or two before that. Um, I seem to be more easily agitated or cranky. Okay. Yeah. Um, you know, and my son lives in my rent house, which is next door. Okay. And so he'd always point it out when I was <laughs> cranky. Or, or, Sons are good for that. And yeah, daughters as well. They really are. And wives. <laughs> and, um, you know, and I, I never really thought about it because I was always on the go and moving. I've yeah. always been real hyper. But, you know, hindsight's twenty twenty. I look back and see where I, it was, it was, Showing up earlier than I recognized it, actually. Okay. And how old were you when the diabetes showed up in your life? Um, 57. 57. 
And but your mom, she hadn't been diagnosed until she was much older than that. Is that yeah, right? Yeah, she was around sixty-three or sixty-four. Sixty-three or sixty-four, and and she lived to be how old? Seventy-three. Seventy-three, but really went through some hard times. Yeah, her last few years were tough. So you went from. <clears throat> 400 or in the 400s mm -hmm. and you you were able to get it down into the low 100s yep and uh, to me that's amazing you hadn't even read my book <laughs> not yet <laughs> you know, but it sounded like you and i are on the same page in yes. a lot of respects uh, we, we are both convinced that what you take in your mouth makes a huge difference and that the name of the game is carbohydrate restriction yes. you know you you don't have to eliminate carbs but you definitely have to cut back seriously yes. and you did that you you knew enough to do that and it put you a notch well it put you out several notches higher than most diabetics because a lot of them they're in a fog what kind of doctor advice had you been given you saw this one doctor i think you saw what a couple of other doctors uh, i saw another doctor one other doctor no i once I, I felt like i had it under control yeah you know i'm old school i didn't go back to the doctor for almost a year okay and um i don't know what it was that caused me to go i think i just want to get a, a follow-up and it was um, probably two years later, I went to a, the ne a different doctor yeah. at a clinic. And my A1C, he said, was just a little bit high. I don't remember my exact numbers. Just a little high. Just a little high. Well, that's a lot better than when your glucose level was at 400, because if it was at 400, your A1C would have been not Way, just a little high, but extremely, extremely high. Extremely high. Yeah. And so my you, blood you pressure. you've done a, a lot of good for yourself. Yeah. And, you know, I feel fortunate enough to, to be able to learn all this stuff through the experience I had with my mother, you okay. know, I feel like the Lord set me up so I could attain this knowledge. Yeah. You know, knowledge is powerful. Right. Wasn't that exciting? Well, if you're not diabetic or pre-diabetic, it probably wouldn't be exciting. It'd probably be boring. But if you've watched this video, chances are you are either diabetic or pre-diabetic. And it is exciting to learn you can make a difference. There are things you can do. There are victories you can win in this area of runaway blood sugar. I would encourage you to subscribe to our channel so that you can see the next video we'll be posting, which will involve Richard testing two different meals, eating a big plate of fruit and then testing his blood sugar an hour later, and then eating a big old salad full of veggies and then testing his blood sugar an hour later. The results will be incredibly helpful to you. And as you watch these videos, I believe you'll be inspired, you'll be encouraged, you'll be informed, you will be helped. God bless and see you again soon.